Sometimes thinking outside the box can be beneficial, but for one Minneapolis man, it was life changing. Gibson's shoemaker shop is full of all kinds of knickknacks and random things. And when they come together, they create beautiful music. In this week's Finding Minnesota, John Lawrenson shows us how shoemakers instruments aren't just cool to look at, they're also fun to play. The man behind the smooth Delta Blues you're hearing is Gibson Shoemaker III, an artist's name if ever there was one. Chances are good you've heard this music before, but chances are just as good you've never seen the instrument that's making it. Plugged it in and ran a slide down it and my mind was blown. I was like, this can't be seriously real. Eight years ago, Gibson made his first cigar box guitar. He had been inspired by a documentary, but there may have been another motive. The recession had left Gibson without a job. I lost a house over it. I lost I, pretty much everything. I was back to square one. You know, a lot of people can look at me and go, that's really adventurous and brave of you to, you know, you know think you're going to make a cigar box guitar and actually make a living or whatever. You know what, though? I'll tell you, when you have nothing and you've lost everything, nothing's scary anymore. That includes turning wooden strings into working works of art. Boxes made of Spanish cedar that once held coveted Cuban cigars struck just the right chord. So did diddly bows made of ancient beer cans. This okay. green belt can has been around yeah, since it's a million years old. Eisenhower was president. Yeah. And Gibson even converted a Minnesota classic into Spam Joe's. But as the new owner of Lucky Devil Guitars, his opening act didn't go so well. So like we didn't sell anything the whole day, right? And my kid looks at me at the end of the day and goes, this is going to be really big for you. He goes, you've done a lot of other stuff, but this, this is what's going to be cool. You know, this is going to work. He was right. Their state fair booth brought better luck. People from 8 to 80 were buying and playing. And I'll go to plug it in and they'll go, it plugs in? And I'll be like, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of the whole point of this thing is they plug in. Man, I had guys sitting there for an hour playing Metallica on some of these things and my mind was just blown. I was like, I didn't even know it was capable of it. They become popular with musicians too, including renowned country blues artist Reverend Payton. Gibson is now his own one-man band in business. The biggest challenge, making the necks, is a pain in the neck. We spent about three weeks covered in sawdust making necks. Once the necks are done, that's kind of when the fun part begins. He's turned lunchboxes, shovels, and even bedpans into guitars. The more beat up they are, the better. Gibson doesn't claim to have invented the wheel, but he makes a pretty cool wheel just the same. And even though the name of his business suggests some luck, his family disagrees. Do you feel blessed? Oh, for sure, more than blessed. I feel. Uh, I say lucky a lot, and the minute I say lucky, my wife hates it because she's like, you have worked way too hard to be called lucky. But I, at the end of the day, I do feel lucky whether she likes it or not. In Minneapolis, John Lordson, WCCO 4 News. Yeah, nothing lucky about it. It takes Gibson about 10 to 12 hours to make a cigar box guitar. Prices range from $300 to $400, but his Spam Joes and Can Joes, I love those names, cost about $30 to $40.